Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV by Bagbagide Imo TV. I am Mori Rebila Lawa. First are the major headlines for the world news. Buhari prevented DSS from manhandling Sibian governor Emefele in Abuja. Anxiety over Akiri Dulu's health, no cause for alarm, state's government assures. How traditional rulers can help fight corruption, promote good governance. Syndicate the fraud Ogun, job seekers, victims tackle DPO. Katsina Council Vice Chairman abducted, police launch rescue. Resident Bone, Niger Police Station over priest murder. Two killed, 55 injured as truck crushes 13 vehicles. And to some stories from Lagos State as regards the lawyer killed by a corp. Body of Lagos lawyer killed by policemen arrives church for burial. And on foreign, Vietnam president resigns amid major anti draft porch. Finally, on sports. Osime is one of Europe's deadliest striker. More to come from the news. President Mohamed Buhari has been linked to the inability of the Department of State Services, DSS to Manandu, the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefili, at the Inamde Azikwe International Airport in Abuja. Reno Omakuri, a social political activist, said the intervention of President Mohamed Buhari's presidency prevented DSS operatives from handling a mafia. Omakuri said Buhari should be commended for ensuring the rule of law by preventing the manhandling of a mafia by DSS operatives. In a tweet, Omakuri said Buhari did well. He wrote, There was a melee at Inamdi Aziko International Airport today when DSS officials tried to manhandle CBN governor a mafia. Though I am an ardent critic of Buhari regime, I commend the presidency for intervening and preserving the rule of law. Buhari did well. Moving on to the next story. Following anxiety over the state of health of Governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akiridulu, the state government has declared that there was no cause for alarm. There has been growing anxiety over the governor's health across the state. But the governor's chief press secretary, Richard Olatunde, in a statement issued in Akure, the state capital, assured the people of the state and Nigerians that the governor was in good condition. The statement reads, We have observed the growing anxiety about the state of health of the Ondo state governor, Rotimi Akiridulu, the good people of the state, and by extension, other friends and well wishes continued to express concern over the wellness of the governor, especially since yesterday. Governor Akiridulu, just like every other mere mortals, has had some health challenge for which he has since received treatment and recuperating speedily. Moving on to the next story. The Oluo of Iwola Abdul Rashid Akobi says corruption would be reduced to a minimum level in Nigeria when traditional rulers join in scrutinizing the activities of politicians. Mr. Akobi would lamented the high rate of corruption in government blame it on politicians and call on traditional rulers across the country to check the activities of politicians to achieve good governance. The Osho State First Class Traditional Ruler made the call on Monday at the launch of his book titled Code of Kings, released to mark his seventh year on throne. Politicians need somebody to always check and balance, and only the people can do it are the royal fathers. We can see so much corruption in the land. So where are we heading with this kind of democracy if there is nobody to check politicians on corruption and bad governance? We want to prepare kings for this role, he added. The monarch also complained that traditional rulers across the country are not recognized or assigned roles by the constitution. Moving on to the next story. Some job seekers in Ogo State have been allegedly defrauded by officials of a direct selling and e-commerce company, QNET Infinity Millennial of Nigeria. The firm, located at OK Celestial Avenue, Ibafo, in the Obafemi Owodo local government area of Ogo State, was alleged to have defrauded the victims of sums ranging from 100000 to 500000 Some of the victims who visited Punch Place, Magoro. Last Tuesday said there were promised jobs and food with a weekly bonus of $225 if they meet certain targets. 
Port Metro learned that the company rented a building separate from its office where some of the youths were accommodated. A victim, a Zeosika Chinon So 28, said he first paid 50,000 Naira to the company's manager, Imano Njoku, in July 2020 when he joined the firm and later 450,000 Naira. Adding that, he was issued a receipt indicating he had 1 million balance to pay. He said, I met many young people like me there and I was taken to a house called The Lodge where over 200 people shared rooms and powers in the building comprising three bedrooms, flats in four units. We were promised that after our training with the company, the management would open domiciliary account for us where we would receive $225 every week. The feeding, which we were told would be three times a day, became once, and it was only ever, and what soup we were sad. To part of the north from the world news. Terrorists on Monday abducted the vice chairman of Musawa local government area of Katsina State Aminu Umar. Resident said Umar was abducted along with one Isa Peiki by terrorists who invaded his village Kira in the Jinkashi ward of the council around 1 a.m. on Monday. The spokesman for the Katsina State Police Command, SP Gambo Isa, confirmed the story to newsmen. He revealed that the police had rescued Peiki while efforts were on to rescue the council vice chairman. Meanwhile, police operatives from the command rescued no fewer than five kidnapped victims from two councils of the state on Sunday and early Monday. Isa, who confirmed the development on Monday, said terrorists had earlier kidnapped the victims from different parts of the state. Going on to the next story. Following the burning to death of a Catholic priest in Kapinkoro in Paigoro local government area of Niger State, aggrieved women and youths have reportedly burned down the Kapinkoro Police Divisional Office. According to a resident in Kapin, who identified himself simply as Jonathan, the incident began when some women comprising evangelical church winning all and Catholic women groups converged on the premises of the burned parish at 7 a.m. on Tuesday to offer prayers against those who burned the Catholic priest. He said, as the women were praying, some policemen arrived at the venue saying they were an attachment from the Kafin Koro police station drafted to the church to provide protection for them. The women rejected the protection and requested that the police should leave because the police didn't provide protection for the dead priest, neither did they show up on time when they were called. He said, the village youth eventually joined the women to hold a peaceful protest, but the police started shooting and a villager got killed by a stray bullet by the policemen who fired. As the police were trying to disperse the crowd, the police began shooting into the air and one of the bullets hit a man who died immediately. So that was how the protest turned violent, he concluded. And to the next story. Barely two days after 16 persons died in a road accident in Mungu, local government area of the two states, two persons have again been killed and 52 others injured in a fresh accident in the just north LGA of the states. The Public Enlightenment Officer of the Federal Road Safety Corps in the state, Mr. Peter Luxen, confirmed the incident in a statement on Monday. He said the victims died when a truck plying George Bouchy Road rammed into 13 other vehicles on Sunday. Luxen said the crash occurred around 5 p.m. at Zekelio along the George Bouchy Road. 14 vehicles were affected. People involved were 54. Unfortunately, two female adults were killed during the incident, while 52 persons were injured. He attributed the crash to brake failure and loss of control. The injured victims were taken to play two specialist hospital and Toro General Hospital for medical attention, while the corpses of the disease were taken by the family members for burial after being confirmed dead at the hospital, he said. And to the next story from Lagos State. Photos and video from the burial ceremony of legal practitioner Bolanle Rohim, who was killed by a trigger happy policeman in Lagos, have surfaced on social media. Recall that a disease who left behind a five year old daughter was killed along the Aja on the bridge area of Lagos State on Christmas Day after an officer, Drambi Vandi, pulled a trigger that hit her in the moving vehicle. Following a mother, the Lagos command arrested a cop and two others on duty when the incident occurred. The police then vowed that Vandy, if found culpable, would face the full weight of the law. However, the other officers were released because they were arrested, 
to give a first hand account of the incident. Details of Vanley's interrogation revealed that he claimed accidental discharge. He is said to be due for promotion by 2023 and retirement in 2024. In case of just joining, you are watching the world news from BGI TV, now the foreign story. Vietnam President Gun Yon Zuan has resigned, state media said Tuesday after days of rumors he was about to be sacked amid a major anti-corruption drive that has seen several ministers fired. Park has submitted his resignation from his assigned position, quit his job and retire, state news agency VNA said. The president's sudden departure is a highly unusual move in communist Vietnam, where political changes are normally carefully orchestrated with an emphasis on cultural stability. His resignation follows the dismissal of two deputy prime ministers this month in an anti-corruption board that has led to the arrest of dozens of officials. He was prime minister between 2016 and 2021 before assuming his role as president. Finally, on sports. Former Nigerian forward Jonathan Akobowie has described Super Eagle striker Victor Osime as one of the deadliest strikers in Europe at the moment. He made this known on the backdrop of his impressive display against Juventus, where he grabbed a brace in Napoli's 5 1 win at the weekend in the Serie A. The brace means Osimia has scored 12 goals in Serie A this season and remains the leading maxman with four goals ahead of his closest competition. Reacting to Osimia's goal scoring feats, the former World Sport star told Complisport.com that the Super Eagles has shown that he can handle the pressure at a bigger occasion. He also said that the Nigerian international is one of the deadliest strikers in Europe at the moment. That concludes the world news from BGI TV this hour. Before we go, some major headlines. Buhari prevented DSS from manhandling CBN governor Emifili in Abuja, Omakwe, said. Anxiety over Akira Luz health, no cause for alarm, state government declares. Our traditional ruler can help fight corruption, promote good governance, Oluwo of Iwo. And finally on sports, Osime is one of Europe's deadliest strikers. For more details on our YouTube channel, the handle is Barbara Gede Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawi Adebayo. Please like and follow the page. On Instagram, Bagede Imo underscore 22. For other placements of your goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on the screen for advert placements only. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Ray Rebila Lawa. Good evening. Oh, na, 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 na. If you want to know what's going on in city, uh, or you want to listen to the latest news and taste, no stress, oh, just to be.